carnivore diet for lupus, is it effective and how can you make sure you're doing it right? In this video, we'll be talking about the carnivore diet for lupus and how it holds up next to other diets. We'll go through some common challenges and explain how you can track your progress to get the best results. Hi, I'm Dr. Chanu Dasri, a surgeon dedicated to reducing inflammation caused by gut microbiome imbalances. I myself struggled with digestive dysfunction and autoimmune inflammation in my early 20s and successfully put together a methodology that worked not only in myself, but also in my patients. My method is called the Mind-Gut Immunity Approach and has resulted in thousands of success stories over the years. If you or someone you know struggles with lupus and wants to rid themselves of inflammation for good, check out our website, mgiclinic.com, and schedule a discovery call with me. I'll walk you through some practical steps for lupus recovery and how to achieve lasting results in just six weeks. So let's break this down. There's several studies backing the carnivore diet for managing lupus, but at the same time, a lot of research shows just the opposite, with some even suggesting that the carnivore diet could contribute to the development of lupus. So how do we make sense of these differing perspectives and figure out what works for lupus? As I discussed in another video entitled Ideal Diet for Lupus, I strongly recommend customized phytonutrient-focused diet plans based on four important criteria. And these criteria help me determine if a diet will be effective for managing lupus. Let's recap the four criteria. Number one is phytonutrients. Number two is macronutrient requirements. Number three is microbiome specificity. And number four is food sensitivity. For more detailed breakdown, check out the Ideal Diet for Lupus video, but I'll summarize them briefly here also. Now let's take a look at how the carnivore diet stacks up against other diets, like the phyto diet that I often recommend for lupus. So just to review, the harmful bacteria and fungus in your gut feed on carbs like sugar, starches, and fiber, leading to bloating, gas, and inflammation. 80% of the immune system is in the gut, so all of the inflammation you're going to see in lupus is going to be derived from the gut. When we examine why the carnivore diet sometimes works for lupus, it's because it removes carbs from this equation, cutting down the source of inflammation. The carnivore diet for lupus focuses entirely on animal-based foods, cutting out fiber and carbs, and incorporating some electrolytes for balance. This diet eliminates all carbs, including fiber, sugars, starches, and lactose, which sets it apart from keto or other low-carb diets that may still allow some of these. By sidestepping the problem of feeding bad bacteria, the carnivore diet for lupus provides calories from fats and proteins, and that's why some people with lupus use it as a temporizing solution during flare-ups or when other diets aren't working. However, remember those four criteria we talked about. Cutting out carbs may provide temporary relief, but it doesn't address the microbiome imbalances that are critical for long-term health, and I'll dive deeper into that shortly. Let's start with the first criteria, phytonutrients. Phytonutrients are plant-based micronutrients that pack a punch when it comes to delivering antioxidants and anti-inflammatory compounds. They can be really beneficial for managing lupus, especially since inflammation is the key factor in this condition. Here's a 2019 study on the effect of curcumin, a natural polyphenol compound, and how it attenuates lupus symptoms. And this one from 2022 evaluated the role of probiotics in modulating the gut microbiome and their potential therapeutic effects in managing lupus. These nutrients fall into several categories like polyphenols, terpenes, thiocyanates, fiber, resistant starches, omega fats, and alkaloids. Phytonutrients help reduce inflammation throughout the body, including the gut, which plays a huge role in managing autoimmune conditions like lupus. A strict carnivore diet, however, doesn't provide any phytonutrients. So if you're going to stick to the carnivore diet plan, herbal teas can be a great way to get phytonutrients without adding carbs, fiber, or sugar. Other diets like paleo, keto, and low-carb plans do allow for phytonutrients, so if you want some of these anti-inflammatory benefits, you may consider these other options. Just remember, with a strict carnivore diet, you'll miss out on some of the beneficial aspects of phytonutrients, which are important for managing lupus inflammation. Next up, let's cover macronutrient requirements in lupus. The carnivore diet for lupus does a decent job in terms of meeting macronutrient needs. Macronutrients include carbs, fats, and proteins. By entering your weight and height and activity into a calculator on my website, you can estimate your personal macronutrient requirements. With the carnivore diet, however, adjustments will need to be made, especially like increasing the fats and the proteins and reducing carbs. In general, a diet that gets half of its calories from fat is normally a good thing. 
Although I don't particularly like the saturated fats in meats, which are associated with certain inflammatory processes. I also don't like the animal-based cholesterol in meat, which can allow for increases in arachidonic acid in the body. I describe both of these pathways of lupus inflammation in some of my other videos on my channel. So if you need a refresher, feel free to look at some of these other videos. When I design diets for my clients, they're usually lower in carb anyways, for obvious reasons. And most of the fats come from plant-based omega sources, so you don't have any of these problems. From a macronutrient perspective, the carnivore diet for lupus can meet your needs, but the fats and cholesterol may lead to inflammation. Next, let's dive into microbiome specificity. Let's revisit the equation. Bad bacteria and fungus feed on carbs, resulting in inflammation. While the carnivore diet for lupus removes the carbohydrates, does it selectively promote the growth of good bacteria? The answer is a clear no. Now, I know there are people on YouTube who say that the gut microbiome improves on a carnivore diet, and there are even Reddit threads dedicated to this discussion, but let me share my practical experience. After reviewing hundreds, if not thousands of stool studies, I have never seen a healthy, balanced microbiome in someone following the carnivore diet with lupus. Lupus inflammation is often driven by gut microbiome dysfunction. And that's why we start our program with patented probiotics from Japan, which help rebalance the gut and flush out the harmful bacteria. But how do we support the growth of the good bacteria? It's not by avoiding carbs, it's by carefully selecting specific phytonutrients. And that's where the MindGut Immunity Method shines. We designed the lupus diets to promote the growth of beneficial bacteria, which form a biofilm that helps push out the bad bacteria and fungus. Over time, this process reduces the body's production of pro-inflammatory cytokines like TNF-alpha and interleukin-6. The biggest problem with the carnivore diet for lupus is that it sidesteps the root cause. Sure, you're not feeding the bad bacteria by avoiding carbs, but once you reintroduce carbs, fiber, or sugars, the symptoms return. And I've seen this happen time and time again. People fail the carnivore diet because it's not a long-term solution. When people go back to eating carbs, the symptoms come back because the underlying microbiome dysfunction was never resolved. On the other hand, the phyto diet for lupus addresses the root gut microbiome issues. This means that long-term you can enjoy more dietary freedom and even indulge in cheat meals without negative consequences. I typically teach my clients how to incorporate cheat meals in the second or third month of the program because by then we've resolved most of the gut issues. While the carnivore diet can help during flare-ups, it's not a sustainable long-term strategy compared to the phyto diets we create for our lupus clients. Over the years, I've spoken to many people on discovery calls who've tried the carnivore diet for lupus, and most of them tell me the same story. They got some temporary relief, but once they reintroduced carbs, their symptoms came back. And this is something I hear often. My hope is that this honest review of the carnivore diet for lupus helps you decide if it's the right choice for you. While it can help manage symptoms in the short term, addressing the gut microbiome is the key to long-term success. Now let's look at the final criteria, food sensitivities and lupus. Food sensitivities are a common concern for people with lupus. And in my other videos, I discussed the four main food sensitivity tests available, the skin prick test, the IgE blood test, the IgG4 blood test, and the newer mediator release blood test. If you need more information about these tests, feel free to check out my videos on food sensitivity testing for lupus. Now, with regard to the carnivore diet, there's the concept of complex proteins, which I've discussed in my past presentations. You basically ingest large amounts of protein, which are broken down in the stomach and upper intestines by proteases. These proteases break down the protein into individual amino acids, which are then absorbed into the bloodstream. But sometimes these proteins do not completely break down and form small peptide chains, which can cause really bad inflammation. We see this in various types of complex proteins, especially ones that are animal derived. So there's a significant chance that you may develop sensitivities to one or more types of meats or even eggs. And this makes the carnivore diet a risky option for lupus as it limits your food choices and could trigger sensitivities. All right, that's my talk. In the comments below, tell me your experience with the carnivore type diets for lupus and what's worked for you and what didn't. I'm curious to hear about your experiences. As you know, I've had a great amount of success using the MindGut Immunity Method in my clients, and I'm a strong supporter of customized phyto diets for lupus and focused gut microbiome recalibration for our clients to achieve lasting success. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content such as this. As always, this is Dr. Chanu Dasri with the MindGut Immunity Clinic, and I'll see you next time.